This video talks about my thoughts on Marvel's What If series and concerns I had regarding Spider-Man No Way Home. This was streamed on my Twitch channel before the What If series debuted and of course before the No Way Home trailer was released. So keep that in mind while watching this. And uh, so uh, speaking of What If, um, I'm just going to touch on this uh, very briefly here because uh, since, it, it's, since it's a new show that's not out yet, there, there's really not much for me to talk about, but... Um, I'm actually more excited for the show than I was when I initially heard that it was going to be a thing that was going to be a part of the MCU. Now, a lot of that does have to do with the fact that, um, you know, like I just said, Loki is uh, basically the reason why the What If show happened. And um, I forgot what it was that was said exactly, but I think there was like a press release or something where, I like again, I, I don't remember exactly what was said, but... What they said was basically confirming that um, what if is basically going to be required watching, you know, because so <laughs> I keep repeating myself here. But, but you know, like I just said, um, Loki basically created the multiverse again. And uh, that's the reason why the what if show is happening. The, the, the what if show is basically showing us, you know, all these different multiverses that exist out there. You know that were basically created as a result of um, the the events of Loki. Now, at first, I thought you know, you know that w what if possibly was showing us the multiverse, but that the multiverse already existed because that's what the ancient one said in uh, the first Doctor Strange movie. But but no, of course, you know, with Loki, we find out that the TVA has been controlling the flow of time all this time to prevent. Um, alternate universes where, where Kangs exist. So um, now with the TVA gone, um, th there's no control over time anymore. So the multiverse is back again. And that's what What If is showing us. Now, I suspected before that um, the, the What If show is, uh, of course, it's going to be a bunch of self-contained stories showing us different multiverses and whatnot. But I'm willing to bet that there's also going to be um, an overarching plot to um, the What If series, and um, it won't be obvious until, like, the very end of the series, but all of these uh, self-contained episodes are, are basically going to play a role in the overarching in, in the overarching plot of, of the series, and um, you know, they'll all be connected somehow. Again, we won't know for sure until the show comes out, but uh, that's basically what I'm expecting to happen, and uh, We'll see exactly um, what is going on with What If um, after the show comes out and everything, obviously. Um, and this is the last point that, that I want to bring up about both What If and, and with regards to Spider-Man. Because I actually do have some concerns regarding the next Spider-Man movie in the MCU. Um, and it has more to do w w with uh, just the delays because... I'm pretty sure, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home isn't coming out this year like it's supposed to, but with all the stuff that's, that's going on with um, movies doing poorly at the box office, and as I already mentioned, you know, the theater exclusivity deal that, that Scarlett Johansson is suing Disney over, you know, all, all of this stuff is going to, to lead to movies getting delayed because studios are not going to want to release the movies in anything other than theaters. And they're going to do badly if they're only released in theaters because no way wants to go to the movie theater during a pandemic. So, you know, I'm pretty sure the movie is going to end up being delayed. But more than that, I'm also worried about um, how the movie is going to play out narratively. Because when Spider-Man was introduced into the MCU, he was first introduced in Captain America Civil War. This was basically the character's introduction um, before he got his own movie in the MCU um, proper, which is, of course, Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> now, we see Spider-Man again in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, and this bridges the gap um, between Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. You know, the events of um, Avengers Endgame and Infinity War um, are basically why the plot of um, Spider-Man Far From Home happens, or at least part of it. But um, we have not seen Spider-Man again since Spider-Man Far From Home, and that movie ended on a massive cliffhanger that, that basically changes everything um, 
regarding the character. Like, I have no idea, you know, how they're going to handle um, the way that movie ended w with regards to um, Spider-Man No Way Home. Because, again, we haven't seen Spider-Man again since his uh, appearance in uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. So, without something to that, that connects the movies together, e explaining what has happened uh, since Spider-Man Far From Home, I'm not really sure how they're, they're gonna, you know, how is that movie going, how is No Way Home going to start off, you know, like, like how are they going to explain, you know, how Peter's life has changed as a result of the ending of Far From Home, you know, I, I feel like that, that that's something that needs to be addressed before we actually see um, what what's going to happen in Spider-Man No Way Home, especially um, if the rumors are true about what Spider-Man No Way Home is actually about. So, <clears throat> we know from the trailer for What If that uh, Spider-Man is, in fact, going to have his own What If story, or at least we saw him in the trailer for it. Um, he was uh, fighting Scarlet Witch alongside of um, Okoye, who is... Uh, one of uh, Black Panther's people. So, um, yeah, we, obviously it's just a trailer, so we don't know the context for why this is happening. But, um, yeah, basically what, what I'm hoping is that uh, since Spider-Man is going to be appearing in the, the What If series, that if I'm right about What If having an overarching plot um, and all of these self-contained episodes are part of said overarching plot, that... Um, the What If series is going to be what bridges the gap between uh, Spider-Man Far From Home and No Way Home. But that that seems like... That seems very unlikely to actually happen because What If um, is uh, going to be more of a multiversal, you know, self-contained episodes kind of thing. And uh, just because I think that there might be an overarching plot doesn't mean that there is going to be, you know, excuse me. It is entirely possible that all of these episodes have nothing to do with each other. And even though the multiverse is the reason why all of these episodes exist, they are in fact self-contained and not related to one another or any other movies. And the What If series is basically just, you know, testing the waters to see, you know, which stories uh, people like the most and um, make uh, movies or, or series out of, you know, whatever, whatever stories people like the most. So, pretty sure that, that you know, that's what's going to end up happening. But, you know, it would be very good for the narrative of MCU Spider-Man if somehow What If ends up bridging the gap between um, Far From Home and No Way Home. But, again, since it is... Uh, a, a, a multiverse uh, show. I don't really see how that could be the case, but um, you know, if it does, then yeah, that that's definitely something that I think MCU Spider-Man needs because again, the the cliffhanger that Far From Home ended on, you know, we need to see um exactly what has been happening since that cliffhanger uh <laughs> before we can get a, a a proper sequel or. You know, if the rumors are true about what Spider-Man No Way Home is, then we need to see something from the fallout of the ending of Far From Home before we get the actual story that No Way Home is supposedly supposed to be.